Our next speaker, I think, is going to be taking the prize for farthest away today. We have Nitya Gard from LinkedIn. A very good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. My name is Nitya, and I'm from Bangalore, India. Today, I will be presenting on building detections for cloud with KQL and attack. Before I start, a brief introduction about me. I have over seven years of experience in cybersecurity, most of which has been focused on analyzing intrusions, responding to security incidents, and building detections. Currently, I'm working as information security engineer for threat mitigation and incident response team at LinkedIn. I have a blog that I use as a platform to share my thoughts, learnings, and experiences on InfoSec and on life. I can be found on Twitter by handles nitya underscore underscore garg. All right, let's get started. Agenda for today's presentation includes introducing Mitro Attack for Cloud, what is new in Mitro Attack for Cloud, and how we can leverage it for building detections in cloud. I will then talk about the overall high-level process for developing a detection. As an example, I will discuss about the cloud-based technique C1528, which is Seal Application Access Token. I will be covering what the attack technique is, what log sources and events can be monitored, and how to write the detection query uh, for uh, this attack technique. I would like to begin with a statement. Attackers have to succeed at every stage. Defenders have to catch them as anyone. Well, the more popular opinion uh, also says something you know, contradictory to it, that you know, defenders have to be right every time, while attackers have to be right once. And the reason many believe so is because it takes one unpatched system uh, or one negligent user or one account takeover for an attacker to get the foothold inside the network. But if you're familiar with the attack lifecycle, you know that from the very early reconnaissance stage to the final data exfiltration stage, an attacker has to not only succeed at every stage, but they have to also cover their tracks all the time. And that opens multiple windows for a defender to detect the attack. This approach is also called defense in depth, which is like leveraging multiple redundant defensive measures. And while the strategy has been a core component of enterprise security uh, for some time now, it is equally applicable and efficient for cloud security as well. But as we know, cloud technology is relatively a new domain, which is still growing and evolving. So how do we build a resilient detection strategy for cloud while still learning about it? Where do we even start? Well, MITRE ATT&CK has made our job a little easy in finding answers to these questions. So what MITRE has done is has created a database of all the known attack techniques for cloud. And these techniques are grouped under 10 different tactics or post-exploitation stages. This database is contactly updated with many renowned individuals and organizations contributing to it. Attack framework can be leveraged for threat intelligence, detection and analytics, adversary simulation, assessment, and engineering. But for the scope of this presentation, I will be discussing on how to use attack for building detections in cloud. But let us first understand the detection development process. Uh, so the first step when developing a detection is to select the attack technique for which you want to build a detection for. Now, it can be that you're already familiar with that specific attack technique, what is it and how it works. Uh, and in that case, you can skip the step two and straight away go to step three. But many a times it happens that we may not be very well aware of it. And that is common and understandable. Attack database is huge and no one knows everything. And that is when the step two about researching the attack technique becomes very important. Now, before we can go and start building the detection itself, we need to do our homework, like study and research about that technique how that attack works, and what is its relevance at your organization? Is the attack technique applicable to your environment? And if yes, then how it can be exploited? So attack gives a detailed description of the attack technique, and it also gives uh, multiple references uh, to other links and resources that can be helpful when researching about that technique. 
The next step is to identify the data sources that you need to monitor and leverage for building that detection. Now, attack lists down all the potential data sources that are applicable for that attack technique. The, after the identification of the data sources, you may have to check their availability in your environment. If they are available, you can go to step four, but in case the required logs are missing, that can be a blocker in your detection development process. But let us say that you have the required data source available. So next one. Now, before you start writing the actual detection query, try to visualize and hypothesize the detection scenario. You know, how that attack technique can be exploited in your environment and what are the events you need to monitor to detect it. And once the detection scenario picture is clear in your head, or even you have written down in a paper, review the logs for those uh, identified data sources to know and understand what events and fields can be monitored and logged. And then comes the main step of writing the detection query itself. And before you deploy the detection query to production, try to revisit the detection query. It is rare that a detection written, you know, in the first attempt itself is a high efficacy detection. So fine tuning the detection to reduce the number of potential false positive is always a good practice. Let us now see how to implement this process for writing the detection query for one of the MITRE attack techniques for cloud. The cloud-based technique that I have chosen for this presentation is Steel Application Access Token. Uh, adversaries steal the application access token and they use them in place of login credentials. So application access token, they are used to make authorized API requests on behalf of the user, and they are used to formally way to access resources in cloud-based applications. So in this type of attack, attackers try to trick the users into granting a malicious application access to sensitive data and other resources. OAuth is one um, you know, commonly implemented framework uh, that issues token to users for access to system. So if in your organization, uh, you have implemented any commonly used OAuth service like Azure Active Directory uh, or Okta, it is very likely that this attack technique is relevant to your organization as well. The data sources that are identified by attack for this technique includes Azure Activity Logs and OAuth Audit Logs. So we learned about the attack technique and I defined the, uh, the data sources. And the next step now is to build the detection. Um, so to get some detection ideas, we go back to attack and read what it says about the detection. And this is uh, what they have mentioned on their website for this particular attack technique. Security analysts can filter for apps that are authorized by a small number of users apps requesting high risk permissions and permissions that are incongruous with the app's purpose. Admins to identify privilege escalation actions such as role creations or policy modifications, which could be the actions performed after the initial access. To simplify attack suggestions, I have created bullet po uh, point out of these. So the first uh, detection idea that we can pull from uh, what attack says about the detection is monitor for high severity permissions granted to an application. So any application requesting for some high severity permissions like reading and sending emails, writing to mailbox settings, uh, writing all users profiles, that can be a red flag and it should be looked out for. Second, monitor for applications sending permission requests for too many users. So if the same application is sending permission requests to many users, it could be trying to compromise as many accounts as possible. So you may want to verify that if it is an authorized action uh, or it's a potential abuse. Third, monitor for privilege escalation actions such as role creations or policy modification. Now, after the initial compromise, attackers usually try to escalate privilege uh, you know, in order to search for more sensitive and valuable data. So monitoring for uh, such actions can be additional detection.
So now we have uh, some detection ideas on how to build the detection for potential OAuth access token abuse. Uh, the next step is to monitor the logs for those event types. Now, depending on which OAuth service you have implemented in your organization, you should review the audit logs for same. Uh, here I have listed down uh, the event types for the Azure Active Directory. So the first event type is the add OR2 permission grant, uh, which is generated uh, in the usage of OR2 permission grant. OR2 permission grant is a resource type that represents the permissions granted to an OAuth application. Second is add delegated permission grant. Delegated permissions are those permissions which are delegated to an application from the authorization of a signed in user or the resource owner. Third is consent to application. This event type is generated whenever a user consents or grants permission to an application. And the last two event types are related to service principles. Service principles are same as uh, service accounts, but they're called principles in Azure. So add service principle event type is logged whenever a new service principle is created and add April assignment is logged when a new service principle is assigned an application role. So this is a detection query written in KQL to detect when a high risk permission is granted to an application. KQL stands for Custo Query Language. Custo Query Language is a simple yet powerful language to query structured, semi-structured and unstructured data. The language is very expressive and it is very easy to read and understand the query intent. So what do we do in this detection query? We define a list of high risk permissions which are not usually requested for or granted. And that list has been given a name as high risk permissions, uh, which contains some uh, sensitive permissions like user read, write all and similar. The next statement in the query, it defines the table name in which we are interested in searching the events for. Uh, so as I mentioned before, it should be the audit logs of the OAuth service, which you have implemented in your organization. Here it is audit logs, which stands for uh, Azure Active Directory audit logs. So we then check for the event type consent to application. So this event type uh, is generated whenever a user grants a permission to an application. And the next few steps in the detection query, they extract some important fields like application name, application ID, username, and the IP address who granted permission to the application. And all of these fields are very important uh, for the security analysts or the incident responders when they are investigating the alert. But the main condition here, which is checked in this detection query is to look for the value in the scope field. So the scope field contains the permission name. And if that permission name matches with what uh, we have defined in our uh, list for the high risk permission, this detection query will show the results for that. So the image shows here one sample query results that were pulled by running the KQL detection query, which I just discussed in the last slide. So as we can see from the image, the application has been given some high risk permissions like user read write uh, privilege access results and similar, which grants an application to do sensitive operations. So we learned today how to leverage MitroAttack for building detections in cloud. What are the high level steps for developing a detection? We also learned about the cloud-based techniques, seal application access token, and how to write the detection query. And that brings me to the end of this presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you to all the participants and to the uh, MitroAttack team, which did a wonderful job. Thank you. I and mean, that was an excellent presentation as well as um, we know you had to deal with, you know, time difference. I definitely appreciate you staying up so late and sharing all this great knowledge. Thank you, Jeremy. No worries. <laughs> so, um, like I said, I think one of the really powerful things you said is that, you know, attackers have to succeed on every stage, but as defenders, like you said, we just can find one stage and find, you know, one clue and run that down. But, you know, as you said, that takes a lot of homework as a defender. You can't just, you know, you know, right. you know just swing for the fences and hope for the best. So what, what advice would you give to people for 
um, like I said, I think your KQ um, you know, query example was perfect, but you know, that in involves so much knowledge. Like you have to know what data is available. What inform or what kind of advice would you give to people who are like just starting with cloud and like figuring out what are what are those data sources and how do you access them? Sure. So as I uh, like listed down that, you know, attack helps us there. Like it will show on that attack technique page itself. It will show you what are the data sources that you can leverage for, you know, monitoring that particular technique. So you just have to check that whether those logs are available in your environment and if that technique is applicable to be exploited in your environment. So, for example, for this uh, talk, I talked about the seal application access token. So it says that you need to have uh, audit logs, uh, which, so if whichever service you have implemented in your environment, like Okta, Google, Azure, Active Directory, so you may want to check whether you have audit logs available for them and how you can leverage. So I think starting with the attack itself can help you there. That makes sense. And that probably helps as well prioritize. Like you said, I think your, your selection of a technique was spot on, because that's one we actually see very often with like the tokens are so vital in these cloud environments. Um, but you know, final final question I had is, you know, I think you, you kind of displayed the power of like KQL. Do you have any advice or resources for people that are interested in like learning more? Like, how did you learn KQL? Is it something that you just kind of get on and start playing with, or are there any great resources that you can point to or kind of share with others? Yeah, sure. So Microsoft has done a very good documentation on KQL. So um, like. It, it has given all the proper uh, uh, known syntax available for all the uh, fields and whatever like uh, it has capabilities. So you can start from there itself. And then there's a very good source available on plural side for it. So maybe that's something that you can check out. But yeah, a, a good starting point will be to start from the Microsoft documentation itself. They've done a good job there. Yeah. I think a couple of people are already dropping those in Slack. So thank, thank you for sharing that great insight and great knowledge. And with that, I'm going to yeah. turn it back over to Adam. Yeah, thank you.